Hello, all of my wonderful fans of World of Paleoanthropology. Today is an exciting day, as today is the first day we start a new series. Now, please bear with me, as whenever I start one of these new series, of course, there's going to be a few bugs and kinks to work out. So, of course, this video is going to be not as good as the ones that are going to come out later, but I still think we're going to have a great time. We're going to learn some awesome stuff. And we'll just improve as we go along. So please don't be afraid to leave constructive criticism. And please, if you have something to say, be kind about it. There's no point in being rude. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's just you're going to get a quick ban off the channel, honestly. Too many weird things going on YouTube to have time to deal with it. But, aside from that little... Uh, spiel there. We're going to be talking about skulls. What are skulls? These things inside here. You know, these. Skulls. This is a modern human skull, as all of us should know. These are what are inside of our heads. We will be looking at this guy, who I think we should all name together for our purposes in this video series. So we know who we're referring to, so I don't have to always just say, you know, the skull will have something to refer to. But this is my modern human skull, so this is, will, will be our reference point for any anatomical comparisons that we'll be doing with modern humans. I won't be really pointing to things on my head or my face. I see no purpose in that, and that I think, since you don't really know how big my head is, makes things a little difficult. But with this, this is average. Pretty, it's not male or female. It's generic mix of features. It doesn't really even have geographic features particularly, although it's definitely more of a European skull, but we can get into that later, more forensics if we want to, but for now the important thing is just to know that this will be our reference point. And I hope with the camera setup that I'm using, as long as it focuses instead of on me, there we go. We'll get some really good views and up close details of different aspects of the skull that maybe many of you have never been able to see before. And definitely more with the hominin casts that I have or the 3D prints that you've never seen before in this, this much detail because I truly feel and, you know, I'm going to do as much as I can to get these casts, prints, whatever that have been given to me in the most hands as I can as I go through school and as I do my explorations and science communications because nothing beats a hands-on approach when you're talking about bones and physical objects and fossils. Nothing. Now, of course, most of us aren't able to have a hands-on approach like this. We're very far away from institutions or can't afford to access them. There's a myriad of reasons. So the next best thing is typically paper, 2D pictures. That's the way it's been done for generations. Now, as I've explained, I have 3D prints. This is becoming more common. Many people have 3D printers. 3D prints are becoming a thing that many people have access to. And we can actually get our hands on these things. But still, it's something of the future. It's something new that's coming in. It's something that's not necessarily accessible for people who are just looking to learn. So I think a step above traditional 2D on paper will be a three-dimensional take on camera with up-close views we can do special episodes where we examine special areas of the cranium or the skull that you request because I want this to be a learning experience for everybody. I want everyone to have a chance to go, oh, hey, what's that? Can you answer what that is? I've always wondered. Have you always seen, if you've ever seen a skull before, have you wondered what these different holes are, etc., etc.? We're going to go through all of these different things in our anatomical comparisons 
not only between modern humans and anatomical modern human variation, but also with hominins that I have 3D casts of. Now, I have done this comparison before, but I thought I would redo it for the first video for the start of this new series, Skulls with Seth. And so today we're going to be looking at this print. Now, many of you may know exactly and who this is right off the bat because it's a quite famous profile. And that would be because this is the species that Lucy belongs to, Australopithecus afarensis. Now, we're going to be talking a lot about this species in this video, as this is sort of an introduction to not only this skull, but to the species that this skull belongs to as well. So, welcome to the first episode of Skulls with Seth. Today's episode is going to be about Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy species, which dated to about 3.3 to 3.5 million years ago, and that's when they started showing up, at least. They have a much longer range, of course, but that's when they start to show up, and when we have certain things like the Laetoli footprints, which is a fossil site, a trace fossil site, where we actually have footprints of what are believed to be afarensis individuals walking through freshly laid down volcanic ash and we actually have the footprints preserved and so we know they were there we know when they were there and we know what they were doing which is just unprecedented and truly amazing in our field these things don't happen and so we can attribute these footprints to this species right here australopithecus afarensis and i'm going to keep saying that because species names are important and it's important that we associate the name of the species with the skull so let's get a good close-up of the front here, and I will just do a slow spin so you can get an idea of what this looks like all the way around, a full 360, and then I will show the top and the bottom. So this species is, of course, as you can probably tell by the morphology or the shapes and definition of the skull, it's quite ape-like. And that's because Australopithecines, or Australopith, the Australopithecus genus, is quite ape-like. They are believed to be ancestral to our species, our entire family actually, the genus, at least of Homo. And the Australopithecines walked the earth for millions of years dating back to about, we have the earliest Australopithecine, which is Australopithecus anamensis, I believe. And again, as with all my videos, please correct me if I'm wrong, as I very well could be. The Australopithecus anamensis is the direct ancestor of Australopithecus Oh, I am actually mistaken. See, this is why we do this. And I'm not going to edit this out. I'm not going to make these videos perfect because I want you to see that, one, I'm human and I make mistakes. But I want you to see the thinking that goes on as paleoanthropologists have all of these facts and all of these things to remember how we figure things out and go through. So the oldest is Australopithecus africanus. And that gave rise to Australopithecus adnamensis, which gave rise to Australopithecus afarensis. And Australopithecus afarensis is Lucy's species, which again we see around 3.5 million years ago. Now these species, of course, it's not a direct linear line. There's not one and then the other. They are on top of each other. In fact, at the site of Lace Holy that I was discussing, we can see that there was actually a second species that was walking there along with our friend here, Afarensis. And we don't know what it was yet. The footprint doesn't match anything that we currently know, but there's a lot of hypotheses and some really good people working and trying to figure out just what is going on here. And I'm sure we'll get more answers as time goes on, but for now, we know that at least Australopithecus afarensis was there. So, 
looking at this skull, what are some things that we notice? We notice that there's pretty prominent canines, at least for a hominin, which usually means that they do not belong to the genus Homo, so we're not looking at a human, and that they're farther back in time if they're on our ancestral lineage. And we can also see that the face is more prognathic, which means how far the face is from the skull, which is here, so it goes out quite a bit, a few inches. And we can see that the brain case is quite small, and that there are large zygomatic arches, which would have allowed for muscles to pass through. They would come right through here and attach along the skull. There is no... Um, large connection for the muscles at the top here. So we know that they were not the most powerful of chewers, such as Artipithecus or earlier, such as Boise Eye and the Nutcracker Man and things like that, who had absolutely tremendous teeth, which we can also see that these teeth, once it focuses in, there we go, these teeth right here, even the molars, are not the absolute largest. They're pretty large when compared to a modern humans, which I'll pull up in a moment, but they're still quite small, which definitely shows that we are going down a line towards modern humans, modern apes, and a progression that is leading down an evolutionary route we recognize. We can see the foramen magnum, which is the hole where the spinal cord connects to the skull, is directly where we would expect it to be for an absolutely habitual bipedal hominin that would walk on the ground and as you can see the skull would balance just like this just like ours does the eyes face forward and are level and parallel with the ground so that must have been the way that this species walked not to mention that we have the footprints that i mentioned so when we look at a modern human skull one of the most prominent things that you'll hear about is how we have a a very flat face. As you can see, here's the skull. It just goes almost completely down. We have almost no prognathism. Of course, this can change by region slightly, but remember, there is no such thing as race, and all humans belong to the same species, and we all belong to the same race. Any difference is due to geological variation, geological, my goodness, geographical variation that occurred during the last few thousand years. But so what we can see, and I will take the lower jaw off here, so that we can see how large, or should I say small, the teeth are, compared to Afrensis. So here is a close-up of what our teeth look like. And let's bring in Afrensis right here. And we can see that our teeth are extremely reduced in comparison. Even though afarensis, and next time maybe we'll show afarensis compared to a much more robust hominin, to show that these are actually still pretty small teeth, but we can see how much more gracile we've become, which just means light and thin, which in our entire skull and our entire skeletal system and bodies. We are a very gracile species compared to what we would recognize the Neanderthals as, which would be robust. But there's definitely some very stark differences when we're looking at Lucy and you or I. The eyes on our species are of course much larger. We have a very very specialized pair of eyes that have evolved over millions of years. Our nasal cavities, of course, are quite larger. The skull in general is quite larger because of those brain cases. Our brains are so much larger than any other species that have come before us, aside from the Neanderthals, that it is just astounding in comparison to the size of our bodies. Now, this video is not a anatomical comparison between these two skulls necessarily. That might be a whole different video because I don't want these to be too long. So this was just a quick introduction and look at Australopithecus. 
for ca uh, forensics, excuse me. And again, please do not take absolutely every fact that I say is accurate. Of course, double check everything that I say. And that doesn't just go for me. That goes for every researcher, even if they are the most well-known in the field because we all make mistakes and sometimes we need to be double-checked. That doesn't mean we don't know what we're talking about, it just means in the moment, especially if we are ad-libbing as I do for these videos because I think I do better than reading off of a script. I think when you're looking at something and reading it doesn't seem genuine unless you've been trained in doing that, which I have not. My specialty is just getting up in front of a crowd and letting them hear me. And I think that's what I do with these videos. So if I make a few mistakes, I think it's okay. I think we can correct them in future videos because the important thing is that everyone learns and the important fact about learning is that it changes. You learn something here, you learn something there, it changes what you learned before and that is okay. So again, this is the first video in Skulls with Seth. I hope you enjoyed it. We learned about our friend here. Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy species. We'll see you next time.